Caribbean Football's Young Stars Award for 2016. I'm Shaka Hislop. Now, when Nathan asked me to do this, I can't help but think back to when I was a young player growing up in Trinidad and Tobago, playing the game just for the love of it, not really expecting to achieve some of the things that I did. But things have changed now and the game has progressed even right here in the Caribbean. The players know what's in front of them, know what's available to them. And good luck to them as they go forward. Now this list, rather extensive, 15 names long, four from Jamaica, the most representative of the Caribbean countries. None of them are goalkeepers, which is a little bit concerning, though I am a little bit biased in that regard. But I have to say, when you see 16-year-olds like Mackinson Cadet from Takes and Caicos represented, you know that the world quite literally is at their feet and it's their oyster. To the writers who've been asked to vote on this award, Godspeed. To the players who've been nominated, good luck. And to the fans, certainly as far as these names are concerned, watch this space and enjoy. Hi there, my name is Nathan Carr, the founder of the home of Caribbean football. A very warm welcome to the 2016 edition of Carib Young Stars, the hottest young prospects in Caribbean football. A big thank you of course to Shaka Hislop for providing us with that wonderful foreword. Now, I started the Carib Young Stars concept back in 2015, really as a way of giving a bit more exposure and recognition to many of the young players within Caribbean football. I for one believe there's a lot of raw talent in Caribbean football, um, many players with a lot of ability um, that just need that requisite opportunity uh, or foot in the door in order to move their careers forward and progress themselves. So really what the project is trying to do in a nutshell is celebrate and shine a light on the young talented players uh, within the Caribbean game um, and give them a bit more recognition that we feel they more than deserve. Now this year um, the presentation is on YouTube as opposed to a published document, uh, which it was um, last year when we had it on Scribed. Um, I felt this would be a little bit more engaging and interactive for you guys, the viewers. Some of you might be wondering, how does a player go about getting selected on the Caribbean Stars list? Well, there are 15 players featuring this time around, uh, and there are a couple of strands uh, that combine to make the, 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 the criteria. The first strand is that the player has to be under the age of 23 at the time of the video's publication. So we have four 22-year-olds and one 16-year-old uh, featuring this year. The 16-year-old is the youngest ever uh, uh, representative on the Caribbean Young Stars list. The second strand is that the player is either born in the Caribbean or part of the Caribbean diaspora. By diaspora, I mean either born in Europe or, or uh, South, um, North America or, or maybe even Asia, um, and they have Caribbean roots. This time, all 15 players are Caribbean born, as opposed to 2015, where we had uh, the likes of Harry, uh, Harry Paniutu from St. Kitts and Nevis, uh, Derek Etienne Jr. from Haiti. Um, those two guys were just examples of players from the diaspora uh, who featured last year. There are various correspondents on board um, who are going to give you a real lowdown um, on the players. We've been tracking uh, these 15 players uh, throughout 2016, looking at how they've been performing for their clubs, looking at how they've been performing for their national teams. Um, so hopefully, you know, that the passion, the enthusiasm um, and the analysis really shines through. Um, and I sincerely hope that uh, you, the viewers, um, enjoy watching this production as much as uh, my team and I have enjoyed making it. Thank you. Now I'm going to be discussing a player who most of you will have heard of already, 19 year old wonder kid Leon Bailey who's been ripping it up in Belgium. Bailey is a product of the Phoenix All-Stars Academy which his adoptive father slash agent Craig Butler runs. He spent time in Holland and Slovakia uh, before joining uh, Belgian club Genk, uh, playing for their youth team initially uh, and then breaking in to their seniors in 2015-16. He hasn't looked back since, uh, continuing his fine form from last season into this, uh, recently making the best 11 uh, from the group stages in the Europa League. Internationally, uh, Bailey has yet to represent Jamaica's seniors. Uh, he has played for the under-23s and scored against the Cayman Islands, um, but there's been a bit of controversy over his relationship with the JFF um, and whether his agent, Craig Butler, um, actually wants him to represent them or not. Um, 
He is an incredible player, uh, phenomenally gifted. Uh, left winger can also play on the right and in the hole. Very, very fast, very, very skillful, very, very difficult to, to man mark. Um, Frank de Boer recently said the player has no weaknesses. Um, so an incredibly um, gifted player who I think can, can, can really succeed in a top European league within the next two or three, maybe three or four seasons, um, depending on, it, on his trajectory. But he's certainly better than the Belgian Pro League. He's shown that. Um, and remember, at 19, there's so much more uh, room left for development. Definitely one to keep an eye on. Hello, my name is Nicholas Maitland and I'm from Barbados. And I'm here to tell you about one of our Barbadian sons, a guy by the name of Ricardio Morris. Uh, Ricardio Morris is a centre back. He can play right back or left back, but he's normally deployed at centre back. He plays currently for the Barbados Defence Force Sports Program. He plays in the highest level of Barbadian football in the Premier League. He went to Tulsa Athletics in the summer of 2016 and he arrived late for the first game of the season but from the second game onwards he was a permanent fixture in the team helping the club to the National Premier Soccer League South Central Conference Championship. He is a seasoned international for Barbados. He has 25 international caps and he's also managed one goal playing in defense as well for Barbados. Previously, he's been under 20 captain for Barbados as well as under 23 captain where he gained four caps. He was BDF player of the year for 2014 and also in the League and Cup in Barbados in 2015, which BDF won, he was a judge to be the best defender and the overall best player. He had a very successful stint with Tulsa Athletics over the summer and we in Barbados congratulate him on that feat, congratulate him on making the all-star team at the end of the season as well and is a testament to his hard work. He says of his, of his time in Tulsa, my bond with the team enabled me to have a successful and fun-filled season. It was a great experience and I want to thank all for this amazing opportunity. Very humble young man. He said, I came to Tulsa with the mindset to give of my very best and to play my very best and to play my heart out. Being named in the All-Star team is testament to that and I am extremely happy. Now, Morris is definitely a name to remember for the future. He's a good, tenacious, and very tough tackling centre back. No nonsense. He can play all across the back line. And as you can tell from his stint overseas, he's definitely on the right path to becoming a professional, which is his dream, but to become a very distinguished professional footballer at that. So we wish Ricardo all the best from Barbados. Nairo Winter is a special talent who hails from View for St. Lucia in the Windward Islands. He's a 17-year-old attack minor midfielder whose biggest strengths in his own words are dribbling the ball and attacking players from the wing and taking shots from outside the box. Although he can also operate at central midfield and fullback if needed. Introduced to the beautiful game by his father, Roger, at the, uh, at the tender age of six, um, Winter is a two-time junior footballer of the year, uh, having picked up the award in 2014 and 2015. He's represented his country at under 15 and the 17 and under 20 competitions, uh, playing a key role in St. Lucia's qualification for last year's CONCACAF Under-17 Championship. Now on the island itself, uh, Winter has played for View 4 Comprehensive at secondary school level, uh, as well as Kane Knights and the View 4 South Senior Team in the local Super League at club level. Winter's dream is to play the game professionally and he's had a little taste of that this year. In September, he went out to England to train with two clubs, uh, Tranmere Rovers and Preston North End, um, with fellow St. Lucia and Melvin Doxley for a two-week period. Uh, and in October, he was uh, one of 12 very lucky boys um, who uh, went out to Manchester uh, to visit the Manchester City Academy campus as part of the Digicel Kickstart Academy. Um, now, he was selected by Man City coaches over the summer um, to visit Manchester City's academy um, where they got to train using the facilities, uh, meet some of the players. I mean, uh, Winter got a selfie with Raheem Sterling uh, and also um, the opportunity to take in a Champions League game, which they did this time around. At his current rate of development, I firmly believe that Winter um, is good enough to, to, to earn a move off the island. 
Um, and surely it will only be a matter of time before he, uh, he, he, he goes off onto international senior duty um, and he becomes uh, you know, firmly part of the senior team uh, for St Lucia. Hello and welcome for the Crib Young Stars, I'm Rudy Radiger. Today I take a look at my former player and the British Virgin Islands, 22-year-old national team captain and center back Troy Caesar. Troy played for me for two years at a junior college in America, where he played 16 of his 36 matches against top 20 ranked opponents, and was a back-to-back all-region honoree. In his first season with three other BVI national teammates, Troy helped turn the program around with the second most improved win-loss record in the nation, and the team was ranked for the first time in over a decade by both the NSCAA and NJCA coaches' polls. In addition to coaching him, I've tracked him with Player Tech GPS and Video Observer Match Analysis. Player Tech tracked a top speed of over 20 miles per hour, and he covered just shy of seven miles that included over 700 yards of sprinting per match. He's skillful with the ball with a bit of flair. Naturally left-footed, he's worked hard to become two-footed. While completing roughly 80% of his passes, he's made around one long range and one key pass per match. He will need to improve upon these as he progresses. One of his skills is stepping out of the line into midfield to stop the play at its source, or dropping deep to cover for teammates has made nearly 10 interceptions a match. A strong tackler that can break up counters in the open field or in a 1v1 situation in and around the box. He uses his ability to read the play to make over seven tackles per match. His real presence is felt in the air. Six foot two and using his incredible 38 inch vertical, he won a tremendous 90% of his aerial duels. This presence makes him also a great threat going forward on set pieces where he consistently troubled opponents. He's very versatile, can play across the back line or in midfield. Depending on who BVI national team head coach Avondale Williams can surround him with will dictate where he's needed most for them. With his move after junior college, if it's to a big university or the professional game, I expect he'll be deployed at outside back or to holding mid. For the Crib Young Stars, I'm Rudy Radiger. Born in Curaçao's capital, Willemstad, to Heath Chong moved to the Netherlands as a young child. In the Netherlands, he spent six years at Feyenoord's Youth Academy before being snapped up early this summer by Manchester United's prestigious academy at the age of 16, having received his international clearance. Chong has primarily played for the under-18s and he actually won the Best Attacking Player Award at the Otten Cup early this year. Now, Chong is a left winger who can also play out on the right, cutting in with his uh, favoured left foot. He's full of energy, full of tricks, full of endeavour, uh, loves taking on his man, loves to get into the byline, um, and indeed you can't really miss him on the pitch with his Valderrama-esque hairstyle, his big afro, uh, which a lot of United fans have noticed and, and commented on. Now although he's never played for Curaçao at any age level, um, he's, a, he's a current um, under-17 Holland international, um, you cannot rule it out for the future. Curaçao of, uh, of course qualified for the 2017 CONCACAF Gold Cup, the first time in their history. Um, whether Chong would, would ever um, you know, play for him in that tournament, it, it, it's very, very slim. However, in the next maybe three or four years, you know, further down the line, um, when he's uh, progressed through the academy at United, um, you, know, you never know whether, whether or not he, he might play for Curaçao. Um, but Curaçao should really be proud of this export. Um, he's doing ever so well at United. Um, you know, Pick it up, Claude, it's all the while. Um, I think it's only a matter of time before more people within the football fraternity, fraternity um, you know, become more aware of, of him and, he, and his abilities. As I say, a left winger, um, full of energy, full of tricks, um, very, very skillful. And he is from Curaçao, the only representative on this year's uh, Carib Caribbean Stars list from Curaçao. To Heath Chong, remember the name. Hi. My name is Tantoki and today I'm going to be talking about 22-year-old striker Tevin Slater, who hails from the island of St Vincent and the Grenadines. Slater rose to prominence last year by scoring five goals in crucial World Cup qualifying games against Guyana and Aruba, which took St Vincent to the semi-final round of World Cup qualifying for the CONCACAF region. Now Slater, who is a fisherman by trade and has likened scoring goals to catching fish, is a quick, energetic striker who has a real knack for scoring goals and really stands out as a, as a talented striker who has a lot of potential. Alongside Olex Anderson and Myron Samuels, he has made St Vincent a formidable team within the Caribbean region. Unfortunately, 2016 hasn't been the best year for Slater. 
fitness problems has limited his appearances for St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and as such, he was not able to make a big impact in games against USA and Trinidad, despite his bundles of potential. Now, domestically, Terence Slater plays for Parham FC in the Antiguan Premier League, and it is hoped he will be able to eventually get a move to the America, where his fellow strikers Myron Samuels and Alex Anderson both play for Seattle Sounders. So, Terence Slater, despite having a quiet 2016, is definitely a player to watch. With a natural ability to score goals and a frightening level of pace, he's definitely one who can make a mark in years to come for both St. Vincent and the Grenadines and domestically if he can find a club within North America. A prolific striker for Haiti at youth level, 19-year-old Jonal Desiree has made a reputation for himself as one of the brightest young stars in uh, Haitian football. Short and stocky with an explosive turn of pace, Desiree really burst onto the scene at the beginning of last year. He scored four goals, including a last gas penalty against El Salvador in the CONCACAF Under-20 Championship, and helped his country to the final round of Olympic qualifiers, which were held in the United States. He earned himself a three-week uh, trial at French club Guan Guan, uh, and scored in a friendly for their reserves, which play in the CFA, uh, an amateur division in France. He made a good impression there and returned to Haiti to represent AS Mir Ballet in the Haitian top flight, and he's currently contracted to AS Capoise um, in his homeland. Cousin of Haiti international Jeff Louis, uh, Desiree um, scored two goals in the uh, final round of Under-20 World Cup qualifiers in October um, as Haiti reached the final and beat Antigua and Barbuda 4-0. Uh, Desiree is expected to, to play in next year's CONCACAF Championship in Costa Rica, um, at which point he'll be 20. Um, he's also being consistently selected now for the national team by head coach uh, Patrice Nebu. Um, he, uh, he came off the bench um, in a World Cup qualifying game against Jamaica in September, as Haiti won that 2-0. Uh, and he also appeared in a Caribbean Cup qualifying win over St. Kitts and Nevis in November. He's, uh, he's been included on the 30-man uh, squad shortlist um, for the Gold Cup playoffs, which take place next month. Uh, Desiree is an exciting part of a new generation of uh, young Haitian strikers. If he can improve upon his uh, physicality to complement his uh, natural goal-scoring goal instincts, um, then I believe he can make the grade in Europe um, starting at a smaller club and working his way up. My nomination for the Caribbean Young Stars list 2016 is Shamari Mark of Grenada. At 19, he's played for the national team four times already and was also captain of the under-20s. When Chelsea visited the Caribbean, he was highlighted as one of the outstanding talents and was also asked to trial at Arsenal and QPR earlier this year, receiving very positive feedback. Shamari at the current moment is at the University of the West Indies in Barbados on a football scholarship. He has one year left, at which point he will begin to pursue his professional career either in America or in Europe. Shamari's style of play is very similar to Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain in that he has a very direct, pacey and strong style of running from the wing position. He causes lots and lots of problems with his skill and with his positive attitude to get in behind defences. What really stands out for me about Shamari more than anything else is his intelligence. What stands out for me about Shamari and the reason why I've nominated him is his intelligence. He's a very, very bright boy, picks things up very quickly and it's for this reason that I believe over the next 10 years he will turn out to be one of the best players in the Caribbean. Keston Julian first caught my attention when I watched Trinidad Tobago play against Guatemala at last year's CONCACAF Under-17 Championship. He scored an outstanding solo goal in a 4-1 loss, surging forward from the left, uh, dribbling past a couple of Guatemalan defenders and then stroking the ball home into the far corner from a tight angle. I've remembered his name ever since. Now, is he a striker? No. Is he a midfielder? No. Julian actually operates at left back with the licence to bomb forward and support his winger. He's currently contracted to Sandra and Gavnete, who finished second in the TT Pro League in 2015-16 having formerly been on the books of uh, Presentation College in schoolboy football and W Connection, one of the Caribbean's leading clubs. For Connection, he made his senior debut in May 2015, um, aged just 16, in a league encounter against his current employers, uh, Jablete. Uh, and he actually came off the bench uh, in, a, in an away defeat to Santos Laguna in the CONCACAF Champions League 
um, in August of that year. It was a good experience for me and I hope to learn from it, said Julian after that Santos Laguna match. Now this summer, Julian travelled across the Atlantic to train with a club in the, uh, in the Netherlands. Although he didn't manage to secure a professional contract and, and emulate his countryman Levi Garcia, who's out with, uh, in Holland with AZ Altmar at the moment, um, the defender uh, can still take positives from the experience. Uh, he, he accessed a, a higher standard of, of competition um, and he's able to bring you know, things that he learned back into his game in his native Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, now, he missed the first round of under-20 World Cup qualifiers over the summer as a result of being in Europe, uh, but he rejoined the squad in October um, as the young Soka Warriors finished fourth and, and booked their place at next year's CONCACAF Under-20 Championship. Um, he was part of a, of a uh, Trimagonian defence that uh, let in just two goals across five games, uh, so kept four clean sheets, and those two, two goals uh, were leaked against Bermuda in the third place playoff. Overall, Julian is a well rounded left back with the capacity to drive forward and make overlapping runs. Uh, and surely, surely, another shot at Europe uh, won't be too far away. I think he was rather unlucky not to secure a professional contract out in the Netherlands. Um, but opportunities will, will follow, I think, for him, um, as he's a very talented and capable young man uh, and a left-back who, as I say, loves getting forward and loves attacking. Hi guys, Jack Brazil here reporting about Mackinson Cadet from the Turks and Caicos Islands. Mackinson is mostly a central midfield player. Um, I first saw him play when he was 15 years of age at the Turks and Caicos Islands on a trip where I was visiting. Um, Mackinson's main attributes are his body strength and his ability to turn with the ball. Uh, he's got an excellent uh, pass, he's got an excellent eye for a pass, um, and he's very physical and strong in the tackle. Um, Mackinson recently had a trial uh, last summer at Nottingham Forest for three weeks. Um, sadly, it was unsuccessful, however, I truly believe that Mackinson has a great future in the game, particularly if he went stateside. His uh, physical attributes and his technical attributes would really lend himself to the game over there. Um, so yeah, Mackinson, a very strong player from the Turks and Caicos Islands. Uh, as a central midfielder, he offers you everything he can to be that midfield box-to-box -box powerhouse. Uh, and at 16 years of age, he's a fantastic prospect. Uh, just to say, the next three videos on Alex Marshall, Junior Flemings and Omar Holness um, were the research and the uh, information presented uh, comes from Jason Lawrence, who is at Athlone RB on Twitter. Um, now, I've spoken to Jason and he said he, he, he unfortunately did not want to be on camera for the, for the uh, project, which is absolutely fine uh, and understandable. So um, we have agreed that I am going to be uh, reading out what Jason has, has got to say about these three players um, on behalf of Jason. So um, I really would recommend checking him out. He's an excellent source um, of information for all things Jamaican football. Um, it's at Athlone RB on Twitter. So just to let you guys know about that. One of the most well-known prospects in Jamaican schoolboy football, Alex Marshall made his reputation representing St George's College, a perennial powerhouse in schoolboy football in Jamaica. He led the Light Blues to the Flow Super Cup title in 2015, with his technical ability and general creativity on the ball really distinguishing him from his peers. Now, as Jason says, he's a left-footed attacking midfielder who could also excel out on the wings, and he spent part of this summer on trial at two clubs, one in North America, called St. Louis FC, in the United Soccer League, and the other in Europe, at German second division club, FC St. Pauli. So two very good experiences for him there, and uh, these took place before the start of the schoolboy football campaign uh, in Jamaica. Now his national service, as Jason says, extends out to the under-17s, where he's produced dominant performances at both Caribbean and CONCACAF level. He helped the young reggae boys to group stage wins over Guatemala, Trinidad and Tobago and the United States at last year's CONCACAF under-17 championship. Jamaica had a successful tournament as they reached the knockout phase, uh, where they again had a rematch with the United States. That game actually went down to penalties, and as Jason says, Marshall missed his penalty uh, in the shootout, unfortunately. USA went through to the World Cup uh, and uh, Jamaica were eliminated. Uh, Marshall was clearly inconsolable at the end of the game, um, but Jason believes that you know he's used that experience uh, to bounce back, um, both physically and mentally. 
Now, Jason poses the question, are there any areas for improvement to, Mar to Marshall's game? Well, yes, there are. As he notes, he has proven himself to be dominant at scoreboard, at scoreboard level in Jamaica, but he hasn't really tested himself too much above that level so far. Jason thinks that he needs better access um, to higher level of competition and a fully professional setup uh, if he is to move his career forward. Jason says a move off the island in 2017, at which point he would have celebrated his 90th birthday, uh, would certainly help with his career development. Jason rounds off his thoughts by saying that Marshall has the potential to grow into an excellent attacker at the, uh, at the full senior professional level. Very few Jamaican footballers have enjoyed a youth career quite as prolific as midfielder come forward Junior Flemings. At traditional schoolboy powerhouse Jamaica College, Flemings topped the goal scoring and assist charts, winning almost every title available in Jamaican schoolboy football. Now internationally, as Jason picks up on, Flemings has been very prominent, playing crucial roles for the 2013 under 17s, 2015 under 20s, and 2015 under 23s. Following a strong uh, career in schoolboy football in Jamaica, um, Flemings turned down an NCAA scholarship in the United States in order to stay put and represent his hometown club, Tivoli Gardens, for whom he made his top tier debut aged just 17 years old. Having impressed throughout, throughout 2015 with Tivoli, uh, Flemings bagged himself a move to New York Red Bulls 2 in the United Soccer League. As Jason says, an injury in September put a premature end to Fleming's first season as professional, but not before he registered seven goals and four assists in 23 games. He garnered a USL Team of the Week selection and was named as one of the USL's top 20 players uh, under the age of 20. Skill on the ball, athleticism and hard work are really the qualities that make Fleming stand out. He is more than capable of dictating a game, and now some fans and some observers are calling for Flemings to be called up to the New York Red Bulls first team, uh, who of course play in MLS. Jason also believes it's only a matter of time before Flemings be uh, begins to get more recognition and call-ups for the senior reggae boys. A graduate of the well-known Warmers Boys School, centre midfielder Omar Holness has been one of the leading talents in Jamaican football for many years. As Jason says, this status was first achieved when he earned the captaincy for the under-17s at the 2011 Under-17 World Cup in Mexico. Holness has also captained his country at under-20 and under-23 level. After catching the eye in Jamaica, Holness eventually signed for the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. There, he made an excellent impression as a freshman, playing in 59 games, scoring 5 times and assisting 10 more. As Jason mentions, the then senior Rega Boys manager Winfrey Schaefer was alerted to Holness's performances for North Carolina and he was given his senior international debut in a friendly against Canada in 2014 and selected for the 2015 CONCACAF Gold Cup squad as Jamaica reached the final of that competition. Also watching were MLS scouts who saw an elite prospect with great physicality and versatility. He left the University of North Carolina after his third season and was given a Generation Adidas contract and made a top five pick by Ralph Salt Lake at the 2016 MLS Super Draft. In his debut season, Holner suffered a seizure in a match for Ralph Salt Lake's USL affiliate side Real Monarchs and he had a quiet start to the year. But he began to find his feet and made a total of nine appearances for Ralph Salt Lake in MLS, including three starts and he earned two more caps for the Jamaican national team. Holness needs to keep working hard in order to consolidate his positions with the Salt Lake and Jamaica teams. He definitely has the ability to become a top player for both club and country. At 18, centre forward Javon Stevens has already played for the Antigua and Barbuda senior team a handful of times, having scored on his debut as a 16 year old against the US Virgin Islands in March 2015. Nicknamed Bozo, he was instrumental for the under-20s in their World Cup qualifiers in October. He captained the team to the final, where they lost to uh, Haiti 4-0, and their first CONCACAF under-20 championship since the 1980s. He's expected to once again captain the team and lead the line in Costa Rica, as that CONCACAF championship kicks off in, uh, in February and ends in March 2017. Now, just this week, Stevens has actually agreed a one-year contract with the option to uh, renew with Seattle Sounders 2 uh, 
in the United Soccer League. This comes uh, off the back of his performances in the under-20 qualifiers, as Seattle Sounders scout Ezra Hendrickson, uh, a name that some of you might be familiar with, uh, used to captain the St Vincent and the Grenadines national team. He spotted uh, Stevens playing out in Curaçao at the qualifiers, and the two parties um, have been able to agree at a short-term deal. Now, does uh, Stevens deserve this opportunity? Without question. He's been very impressive uh, domestically with Green Bay Hoppers um, in Atiba Barbuda's uh, Premier League. And he's consistently played well and scored goals for Antigua, Antigua and Barbuda um, at various age levels. Um, he's been called into the futsal squad. Um, he's played uh, in the Caribbean Cup qualifiers, scored in those. He's played in the World Cup qualifiers when Antigua Barbuda played St Lucia in June. Um, so he's already got quite a lot of experience under his belt. And remember, he's only 18. If you can try and emulate somebody like Peter Byers, the veteran Benner boy, um, who had a couple of stints out in the United States uh, with Montreal Impact uh, in Canada, uh, Los Angeles Blues. Um, there are only short stints, but, um, you know, Byers has shown that, that he can, you know, he's been able to go over there and score goals. If Javon can do that, um, and try and replicate some of his success and they'll be doing very, very well. Um, the Antigua and Barbuda uh, national team manager slash technical director, Ralston Williams, um, has called uh, Javon an excellent, wonderful young man. Um, and the, the future is certainly bright for him. I believe in the next two or three years on his current trajectory um, that he can make uh, the MLS uh, level. Um, you know, if he can if he can hit the ground running uh, in the in the USL um, and start scoring some goals, which I'm sure he's more than capable of doing. Um, you know, then I think he can eventually climb to MLS um, and 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 really be a key key player for his country for the years to come. Jorge Rivera is a left-footed attacking midfielder come forward who is widely seen as one of the most promising young players in Puerto Rican football. 2016 has been a significant year for Rivera who signed his first professional contract with Puerto Rico FC, owned by NBA star Carmelo Anthony in February. Before going pro, uh, Rivera was with Don Bosco FC, one of the oldest clubs in Puerto Rico. He grew up in a poorer part of the island, uh, Peninsula de Cantera, in the capital San Juan. For Puerto Rico FC, the fresh-faced 20-year-old uh, featured in the club's debut NESL full season, uh, which kicked off in July and ended in October. Um, Rivera didn't play as much as he would have wanted to, making just nine appearances, including four starts for the franchise. Perhaps, though, it is with the national team that he has made the biggest impression so far, having made his debut in a friendly versus New York City FC at the back, at the back end of 2015. He was a key member of this year's Caribbean Cup qualifying campaign, uh, scoring his first international goal against Anguilla, in March. He also caught the eye in a May friendly against the United States. Standing at six foot, um, Rivera offers an aerial presence, although primarily he's, uh, his main strengths are his technical quality uh, and his ability to pick up pockets of space in between the lines. The next step for him uh, would be to try and get a move off the island, um, maybe in the USA Soccer Pyramid or Central America, uh, where he's actually already had a trial with our Salvadorian club, Isidro Metapan. Um, if he can uh, experience another league, another challenge abroad, um, you know, where he, he's, he's away from Puerto Rico and his home comfort, um, then that is likely to make him into a better, um, more all-rounded uh, footballer. Right then, uh, time for some thank yous. First of all, I'd like to thank Shaka Hislop for supplying us with that wonderful forward at the start of the video. Shaka's a really insightful, um, knowledgeable, friendly guy uh, who took time out of his busy schedule as an ESPN pundit uh, to do the forward, so I really appreciate that, Shaka. A big thank you to Elio Castillo, uh, who's based out in the Dominican Republic. Um, he did the design and graphics work for the project this year, and he runs his own YouTube channel slash website uh, in the Dominican Republic called DOS. Um, a big up to uh, all the uh, correspondents and scouts, um, Jack Brazil, Rudy Rodiger, uh, Nick Maitland, Santoki Nagalandran, Harry Varley, and last but not least, Jason Lawrence, who obviously did not appear on camera, but his research and the information that he provided um, was second to none. So a big up to all of the uh, correspondents and scouts. Um, a big thanks to my family for supporting me with the project. 
Uh, and of course, thank you to you, the viewers, um, for taking time out of uh, your busy schedules to watch this uh, presentation. Hope you enjoyed it, of course. Um, and you can send constructive feedback uh, to my email, caribbeanfootball at hotmail.co.uk. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Caribbean Football, football abbreviated to FT. BL. I'll put all of the uh, links in the description below uh, for those that contributed so you can check them out uh, and their work in, in your own time. Um, and I'll leave you with this. As the great Bob Marley once said, uh, football is a universe to itself. Um, you love it because you have to be skillful to play it. Freedom. Football is freedom. Thank you very much again. Peace out.